Welcome to Whatever Works, our unique fortnightly podcast in which we talk about whatever works in our lives and in the lives of our community members. Find us at whateverworks.works. And why not join our community? Simply search for whateverworks at mewe.com and get stuck in. Um, I'm, at, I'm, at, I'm at my mum and dad's house because mum's at the hospital um, having a CAT scan or something and I'm holding the fort and um, I've just been to the opticians and uh, that, that'll be a good place to start our podcast this week, wouldn't it? OK, well, Hello, do, the, everyone. do the housekeeping first. There's a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, uh, let's get yeah. Let's just let's just get stuck in, shall we? Hello, everyone, and welcome to Whatever Works. It's show two hundred and fifteen. It's Monday, the twenty second of April. We're back with you again. Hello, Aidan. How are you keeping? My God, have you got a bus to catch or something, Ted? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Here, I'm I, I'm I'm furious with my Ember coffee mug. Do you remember my oh, coffee dear. mug? My lovely heated coffee mug. And do you remember some well months ago now it was it was mucking me about and it was I do not working and working and heating and not heating and I was drinking cold tea and I was getting so peed off with it that I finally bought an alternative mug which arrived sat in a box because the ember mug came back to life and after a little while yeah, I thought I sod this and I sent it back to Amazon well guess what yeah. It you died just again. You another one. It, I did oh. it, it died. It died again. It's called Vintu. V i n t w o. It died okay. again just the other day, and it really wasn't working. And I was drinking cold tea again, and I said, "That's it. Enough is enough." <sighs> Got onto Amazon, bought another Vintu mug, a Vintu uh-huh. S3 Pro. It arrived in a lovely box. It's a lovely mug. And guess what happened this morning? Go on. My ember mug is fine. It's My ember mug is again. working perfectly. My ember mug is serving me piping hot tea, and I don't know what to do. Do I, s- <laughs> do I send this thing back again, or do I just think, <laughs> no, Aidan, your ember mug is clearly on its last legs. Enjoy the new one. Um, uh, just use the <laughs> use the ember because it's a better a better quality mug, isn't it? Well, I don't know. I have opened the Vintu, and it's a lovely mug. It's very similar ah. to the Ember, slightly bigger, slightly heavier. Uh, but um, I'm, I don't. Let's, let's put a link to that one in the show notes. Yes, what indeed. is it? V V I M V I N. I'll send you the link, Ted. I'll send you okay. through the link in a minute. While, while when you start well, your first long boring item, I'll send you the link. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, 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 well, the first boring item we need to do, really, is the, is the, the furniture. Whatever works, dot works is I our website. You've done that. You're, Sorry, you'll find links to all. With, <laughs> shut up. Sit, sit down in the corner. Um, you'll find links to all we're going to talk about in today's show. There, we've also got the MeWe group um, at Whatever Works. Um, so come and join us there. Tell us whatever works in your life, as usual. Um, AidenBell dot com is where you'll find Aiden, and TedSalmon dot com is where you'll find me and links to all I do. Um, right? Have you found the link yet? I have. It's called Vistu. I got it wrong. It's V-I-S-T-O-O, and I'm sending you the link now, but that's going to be very boring for our listeners, so we'll just let them know that the link will be in the, sh- in the, rec- in the show notes at the, the end Vistu. of the day. So why is it better than... Uh, why do you think it's now good? Because I thought you said it was second rate compared to the Ember. I may have said that because last time I didn't open the box because it arrived uh. and uh, <laughs> the Ember came back to life, and I thought I'll save this money and send it back. I mean, the other thing is it's cheaper than the Ember. It's 99 quid as opposed to 129 for a new ember. Right. Um, anyway, I okay. don't want to bore our listeners, but the point being, the embers come back to life. I'm actually drinking a cup of tea, literally as we speak, mm. from the ember. And um, I, I to, do not, to be serious for a moment, I don't think I have any intention of sending the S3 back because clearly my ember mug is dying. So I'll just wait till the next time it stops working, throw it at the wall and start using the Vis2. The end. Good idea. Uh, How are you? Well, I hope you have fun with that. <laughs> I, actually, I thought you, you said 99 quid, but I thought you said that you'd got your Ember mug at 99 quid. Was it on a special deal or something? Oh, I can't remember. It was more than five minutes ago, Ted. How am I supposed to know? <laughs> I, think it was, I think it was on a Black Friday or something, and right. you got it for the 99 quid anyway. Anyway, it sounds as though the, it's not as reliable as, um, uh, as, as, uh, as um, the other one. The cheaper one seems to be having the potential at the moment to be a better mug, doesn't well, I, it? I mean, I don't think I can <laughs> knock the ember. I mean, I've had it for years and I've drunk tea out of it every single day, several cups. I mean, it's served me very well, even if it is on its last legs. It's done a good job. It's a good old retainer. Indeed, Yes. Um, now, where are we going to go from here? Oh, you wanted to talk about the last show, which was on April Fool's Day, and we didn't mention it. 
Yeah, th- th- it was funny, dear listeners, Ted and I had our <laughs> annual conversation of, well, it's April Fool's, do we think we should do anything? And as always, we came to the conclusion that no, we shouldn't. And I just thought no. it would, it's almost a better before discussion, really, isn't it? Except that it was never, it was never, for me, practical jokes were never and never will be funny. I don't understand practical jokes. I don't see the point of them. I think it's unkind and I don't <laughs> have anything to do with them. And I can't. So for that reason, April Fool's is not a very good day for us to be making a podcast. That's all I wanted to say. Oh, okay. And just to wonder whether anyone fancies, um, uh, you know, mooting a discussion in MeWe about practical jokes and whether any of our listeners do find them funny. It astonishes me when I watch these programs, well, I don't watch, but, you know, one, once in a while you, you happen to see something on the television where somebody's having a practical joke played on them. And when the joke is revealed, they say, oh, you got me. Oh, dear, you had me there. And I can't understand that attitude because I would be furious. I would be saying, see you in court. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But then we're old farts, probably. Um, Young people probably are all into this. And and when I was younger, I probably was as well. But you just get like Victor Meldry, don't you, in the end? And, um, you know, there you go. Do you know what I was going to talk about on this this, um, very show, in Mm -hmm. this very position, was that it's so stormy up in North Wales and it's just driving me nuts but typically since we have been um, you know waiting to record for the last few days it's suddenly turned all right again but the wind along the North Wales coast you know about a week ago and then two weeks three weeks before that it's um it, it was just really really bad every day every night it was just just wind 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 it's really um I think it's I think it beats it now, beats beats me now to to my top spot of the most annoying climate issue, which is um, that I always moaned about the the sun and the the heat, as you know. But now I think it's wind. Well, is it, has, has it been windy down there and stormy? Oh, it's bitter, bitter out. Oh, it's bitter out. Oh, yeah, it's been, oh, it's been no. horrible. Yeah, really nasty <laughs> Arctic wind. I totally agree, Ted. But I mean, welcome to climate change, England, mate. I mean, I'm afraid I think that's yes. just something we're. Gonna... I'm in Wales. Well. <laughs> You're at Europe, world. <laughs> <laughs> We're not at home to Mr. Pedantic. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been stormy there as well, then. It's been stormy, yeah, certainly, and and, and also yeah. cold. It's cold today, and it's free, it's forecast to remain cold for the rest of the week. Well, you we ought to make sure you get your um all your your injections and jabs this year. Oh, in case very you get... good. I see what you did there. I did indeed. Two days ago, I had my COVID. <laughs> um, because my mother got invited, as my mother is an elderly lady, she's invited to have a, a booster. And as her yeah. official carer, I can do the same. So I'm, um, I took the advantage to get a COVID jab the other day. So I don't know when I'm getting mine. I'm 61, and right. I, I think, I think I qualify, but only in the second batch or something. So mum and dad have now had two more than me, but then they're 25 years older than me. So yes, yes. Um, I thought yeah. you were officially you're you're not caring for your parents in the same way I am. For I my am. Mother, yeah, I am. <laughs> so I I think if I made a fuss, I could actually get in quicker. But at the moment, they're just saying I'm in the sixty to whatever right. age it is bracket. Yeah. Um. So which now is fine. I mean, I made a fuss because when COVID was, you know rife I, I i was nervous and made made a great fuss and managed to get done yeah. so i'm now on the list that's all okay i i don't think i ever made it to the list um during covid my mum um phoned up the doctors or whatever and said um that my son is our carer and he's not been offered a jab and they and they made it happen in fact they did it at the surgery they said yeah send him down we'll do it here but ever since then, I haven't. I don't seem to have the same status. So it's probably just because I'm not making enough fuss. But I think it's because you shouldn't have destroyed the surgery while you were there, Ted. That's probably what it was. Yeah, beating all the doctors up and smacking them around the head. Yeah. Um, now the the other thing that I was, I, I'm not sure if did I mention on the last show that I, I, I allegedly have got this diabetes type two thing. I think you may have let it slip out once or fifty times. Yes. Well, I, <laughs> I, I I'm still questioning the whole diagnosis anyway we'll see what happens but in the meantime i found i thought that the rich tea fingers were the bit the biscuit to have because they were 31 calories and i can't remember where i got that figure from right but it, but all, all the other biscuits are like 100 calories each and this was 31 so you could have three rich tea fingers are really boring but anyway i found these other things called fox's party rings and they're 25 calories each, and I can't believe it. I put this little story in the MeWe group, actually, because I thought, 
that's really good if someone has got diabetes um then uh, you know 25 calories each but then kev wright our good friend from tech talk uk popped up and said um hang on a minute they might be 25 calories but they're also three times the amount of sugar (laughs) so (laughs) if you are diabetes prone then they're not the best thing after all so we're back on rich tea fingers now which apparently have got 23 calories um so you can have four of those instead of one other biscuit mind you they're so boring you wouldn't want four of them now that shows what how sort of stupid you... I am. Sorry, may I interrupt a second before you go you on may. and say, I thought sugar was calorific. I thought that's the point of sugar that it's very, very calorific. Oh yeah, but he's counting, um, he's counting uh, blood sugar thingies um, for diabetes. Um, it gets complicated. Okay, Don't yeah, worry about I'm it. Confused. What, I was, what I was going to say to you was, um, do you have biscuits? And if you do, um, what sort do you and mother have? Mum's very keen on oaties. Ah. Um, O-A-T-I-E-S, which you can get at Tesco, which I enjoy very much. I don't eat many biscuits because I'm now nowadays trying to eat more healthily. Um, ah. My favourite biscuit in years gone by was the bourbon. Oh, the good old chocolate bourbon. Oh, yes, please. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I quite like those. They're, they're, but I think most people think they're, they, they class them the same as custard creams. They're just kind of boring. Yeah, well, they're dark custard creams, aren't they? Yes. Indeed. Why is that boring? Why are custard creams boring? A, A, A? A, A, oh, tell we had us, a lady. On. One of my friends, my mother had one of her lady friends come to visit recently, and she bought some biscuits, which I'm glad to say my mother didn't like because I love them. They were, I'm not sure what they were, but they were quite a thin biscuit, but they were dark chocolate covered. Oh, absolutely Ooh, divine. Right. I think, as I've said on the show before, I'm a big fan of dark chocolate, and these were dark chocolate covered, thin, crispy biscuits, and they were delicious. Talking of which, have you found me any milk chocolate coffee beans yet? No, and you know, I, I, I looked, I, we go to the Grape Tree. I usually get my chocolate covered beans from there. And almost everything is dark chocolate covered. You can mm. get light milk chocolate covered raisins and I think peanuts. But no, no, no coffee beans. There seems to be something about the coffee that, that is beholden to dark chocolate, not other. I'm sorry about that, sir. Probably. Probably a good, probably a good thing. At least until I have my next blood test, and I'm, I'm proven not to have diabetes. <laughs> you're, determined. Anyway. you're going to will it away. But then again, I mean that's half the battle. It's all psychological. <laughs> so good on you, sir. Yes, indeed. Right, feedback from the last show. Feedback comes from Mike Robbins, who says, I did actually quite miss it when Whatever Works moved to the three-week cycle, but I also quite appreciate the reasons, and so no complaints. Thank you, Mike. I do very much enjoy Whatever Works, he says, and your other podcasts, Ted, and I hope you continue to keep going. Thank you very much, Mike. Mike. We enjoy making them. Well, I I can only speak for myself and Whatever Works, but I I have a ball. I have a blast with you, Ted, doing this. So, yes, long may it live. I think this is the most fun podcast we do, um, followed by uh, Tech Addicts, probably, and, and me and Gareth getting going. And Projector Room is quite a scream as well. Um, but PFC is very formal. Do you know, but I like that. I, I mean, I like that, that <laughs> formal, serious contrast. I mean, that's where it all began with PFC, isn't it? Before all Indeed. this madness blossomed forth. No, I, yeah, OK, that, I mean, space for everything. I think, I, yeah, thanks for your feedback, Mike. I think, Aidan, you would, if I kind of gave in, go monthly on the podcast. I've, I've kind of held you off of that. Um, if you monitor the activity in the Whatever Works MeWe group, however, I can see that perhaps you're right. You know, I, I do sometimes wonder if the idea has, after eight years, run out of steam. Um, and as we approach recording time each time really I, I i'm kind of scrabbling around to try and f- find stuff to put in and um you know i, I don't the the amount of um engagement in the mewe group is not like it was just a couple of years ago even there was a big flow of stuff from the members but um anyway I, we'll keep going three weeks is the mark at the moment so we'll see how we get on a aiden yeah i agree and i think that the thing is i mean there is a group of stalwarts who are fabulous wonderful people who really are keeping the show going and and of course we know that there are many many people who are listening and enjoying the show listening to and enjoying the show and we're very grateful for that but to those pe- to those silent people get involved even if it's just once yeah. in a blue moon just post Indeed. something that we can bring to the show if we see new names then we'll certainly bring that material to the show so um get involved people Absolutely. As indeed did David Baker, who told us that the item that we had on I Want One of Those was... Um, the no, no, I wonder who the... bought it. Sorry. I, want... <laughs> I wonder who bought it. <sighs> I'm very confused. Um, was the, the Swan <laughs> Alexa Smart Kettle, which we spoke about. 
I can honestly say, says David, it is very good. Leaving the pub the other day, my friend said she would go ahead and put the kettle on. When we got back a few minutes after her, she was made up with the fact that the kettle was already boiled when she got there. <laughs> I had I had turned it on with the Alexa app on my phone without telling her. Oh. Works from wherever I am. Job done. Turn your, you can turn your kettle on from Istanbul. The touch sensor buttons can be touched accidentally, however, so that's not such a good thing. Um, and also, you, you do have to train yourself to refill it when you kind of go out. In fact, just keep the kettle full. Otherwise, whenever you want to turn it on from Istanbul, it, it, it might be empty. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? I, adm I admire this because I would be too terrified. I've got a paranoia about electricity and things being on in the house when I'm not there. I wouldn't want to know that my kettle was in the house all on its own, boiling, about to catch fire. Right. You know? Anyway. Well, <laughs> yeah, we'll, 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 we'll come to the houses catching fire a bit later. Oh, will we? Do okay. Carry on. Anyway, yeah. David carries on. David says, I also bought the lethal looking cordless metal blade strimmer. Oh, yes, uh, that horror film thing. My yeah, goodness. Yeah. That was David. He says, I ended up paying thirty four ninety nine for this in a sale, so it was a no brainer and probably a no toa, too, as you said. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it works well, he says. It does have a wire guard on the front. They must think people only move forwards. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Only move it forwards, yes. It came with a grass guard, two 24-volt batteries, a charger, safety glasses. They are safety glasses. I always remember you, when I said on the show, I got my safety glasses, everyone has safety glasses, and you, and you laughed a lot and said that was classic Aidan Bell to think everybody has safety <laughs> glasses. Well, this comes with them, and gloves, yeah. and four metal blades. My God, you get the whole kit. And the blades look like knives for grass. He said, mm. and two... Let me start this again, because it goes on and on. A grass guard, two 24-volt batteries, charger, safety glasses, gloves, four metal blades, two round saw blades for light pruning, plastic blades and wire-type blades. And all of that for what? Thirty-four ninety-nine. dollars 99 Yes, indeed. Cheap at half the price, David. Yeah. And going on, he says, given that a single one of these batteries normally costs £40, I'm so far very happy to just tell whoever uses it to go carefully and check my home insurance for liability cover. <laughs> <laughs> I should probably mention that I am blind and I yeah. live on my own, so I do have someone who comes around to do this stuff for me, so my toes are safe at least. David, uh... with all respect to you, I mean... There's, I'm smiling because to think that this lethal, lethal tool was not only bought by somebody to use in their garden, but it was bought by a blind man to use in your garden. I mean, hats off to you, Mike, and kudos to you for that and for keeping your toes throughout. Well yeah, done, sure sir. Yeah. Con continue to, to, to get the person round to do it. I guess. Yes, indeed. I, I, I guess. <laughs> and he says, and he may regret this now, but he says, by the way, I love all the podcasts you do, so thanks. Hey. Thank you to you too, David. <laughs> thanks, David. That's some great feedback and great engagement and well done indeed now let's get on to the optician because i just got oh, back yes. from the opticians um, um so it's it's a kind of um i've had my i second test done or whatever it was yes they were they were scanning for something or other i can't remember what it was but she's she says that um she's very happy with the result and she'll see me in a year's time anyway um i sent off to this place google's goggles for you which is not google's goggles goggles for you um, and they, like you, I think, um, offered a pair of glasses that were supposed to be ninety three quid, but they offered them for thirty eight quid on a on the the MFA MFI style. Never yes. is there not a sale going on. Anyway, so I've um, I, I've sent off for them, and I measured my pupillary distance in the mirror with a with a ruler, and hopefully I got it right. Um, and um, they off they went to, to, to do it. They haven't turned up yet. This was how long ago? It's three weeks ago since we recorded, so it must be two and something. Uh, anyway, I contacted them. I said, where are my glasses? And they said, it can be 14 to 21 days for delivery, so um, they're apparently still coming, so I've got nothing to feed back on yet because I haven't got them to try them to feed back. Um, you you ordered some as well, didn't you? I did, and when you when you when yours and mine arrive, we can certainly compare notes and discuss. Yeah, I mean, I get I put you onto goggles for you, and my situation is if you remember, I talked about having moved into bifocals. I haven't yeah. been given bifocals and had to wear them because I tried very focals, hated them, couldn't get on with them, and after three weeks of absolutely 
terrible time with them. I returned them, got my money back. Yeah. And then recently I realised my eyesight was really going and I had to do something and I moved into bifocals and I have been begrudgingly, slowly getting used to them. And finally, I'm starting to feel all right in these horrible, horrible bifocal glasses. So I decided, well, now that I'm used to the bifocals, I wonder if I could now train myself that step further and go for very focals, which would be much better and, and ultimately better glasses and easier to use. So, um, yeah, I followed suit and I've ordered a goggles for you or Googles for you. <laughs> very focals. Mine were £38, reduced from the real price of 88 um, and are also on their way. So hopefully by the next show we can discuss. Excellent. We shall, we'll, we'll see if that is the case or not. Um, in the meantime, the £505 pair of glasses, um, very focals, that the optician wanted me to buy, Yes. I, ju- I just said no to and stuff off. I can't afford it. Um, so I went in there today and I said, just give me the cheapest, simplest pair of glasses you've got. Um, and, you know, put a, one pair with my computer distance in. Yes. And one pair, one pair with my driving distance in. And then that's the end of it. So they've done that. And they're, they're like 40 quid a pair. So two pairs of glasses, 40 quid each, which is pretty much the same as goggles for you. Now, they're not very focals. So... Again, it'll be really interesting to see what happens with the very focals when they arrive. I'm looking forward to our, con- our, our, our conflam about it when we both got them. I am too, and I'm very much looking forward to trying them. Having hated them last time, I wonder, as I say, if now that I've worn bi- uh, bifocals for a month or two, I might be better get, get on with them better. Indeed. Anyway, let's move on before people feel fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a window bird feeder. Not another one. Well, you know, I've got this cage at the window that the, 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 the tits come and feed at, which I love. Well, um, we, ha- we now have a pair of robins living in the garden close to my studio window, which is lovely. And I wanted to put a... I, tr- I thought I'd try putting a bird feeder at the window and I found an old one in the garage and stuck it to the window. And sure enough, the robins started coming to the window. So I thought, right, worth buying a decent one. Got onto our favourite shop and looked through them. And what I wanted, the USP that I was looking for was... A clear view because most of the bird feeders that you stick on your window are made of or include a lot of perspex and you have to look through a layer of perspex to see the birds you see you know you look through your window right. and the perspex bird feeder before you see the bird i found okay. one that's actually made of metal and has a metal frame and so you're looking directly at the bird ah. which is much nicer uh 15.99 i paid 14.99 it's gone up a whole pound since i bought it um and, and and that's the point. I mean, there are dozens and dozens of these available. But the thing that I enjoyed about this one was the was the no view deteriorating perspex. Um, yeah, very yeah. nice. Very it's a nice sort of gold colour, gold bronze colour. And have you seen any c- birds of that colour that they've got in the picture here? That red, tropical looking bird. <laughs> I'm just looking. I'm just opening Amazon now and having a look at the picture. <laughs> Good lord, no, no, that's some sort of phoenix. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yes. very good. Though. I have no idea. I think that's somebody playing with Photoshop. Indeed. Um, um, right now, on the last show, I brought my oximeter to the show. You um, did, and it was a cheap and kind of cheerful one, um, which which I think it was in still using, wasn't it? Because I I had it for since COVID. We compared notes on it. Yes. Anyway, Mum has not been well lately, as evidenced by the fact that she's in hospital today. Um, and I thought, it's her birthday this week. I'm going to buy her one. But I won't buy the cheap and cheerful one that I got. I'll get a, a one with a, a you know a brand name or something. So mm-hmm. I, went, I went in the hunt of one, and I saw this brawn one. Um, and sure enough, it's really nice. Uh, £18.70 it was, instead of the, like, £14 or whatever mine was. Um, same sort of design, finger clip one. Um and uh, it, it does the same things. It does your blood oxygen. It does your heartbeat ongoingly. Um, it's got a sub menu where you can set alarms if you want to. So if you were in, in bed kind of quite a lot of the time you, and you have this thing on your finger, then if the if the blood oxygen goes down below 95, you can set it so it beeps at you. Oh, that's if clever. You've got, so, so there are some little extra bits in it because you've, it's a, a kind of known brand and they've, they've kind of added some features to it, I guess. But... Anyway, it, it, it's very nice. I mean, I'm not complaining about mine because mine does the job perfectly well. But this seems to be like a, just a step further. And Mum's very pleased with it, and she's having fun playing with it and um, testing it against her Pixel Watch as well. She keeps she keeps doing it on her finger, then looking at her watch and trying to catch <laughs> it out. But she so far she said actually it's really accurate, and it and it the the, the two of them talk very nicely to each other. 
<laughs> Splendid. Nice one. And you talk about the price being a little more than the one you bought before. I'm trying to remember what I paid for mine. I think I paid about 700 quid for mine because it was at the beginning of COVID what? when Good they were, grief. you know, like reindeer poo and nobody <laughs> could buy any. Wow. I said reindeer poo. I think I meant unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> reindeer poo is a little easier to get hold of anyway move on Aidan Mike Latour brings us now get this the fellow Aidan <laughs> and oh, he says yeah. they almost spelled your name correctly because this is Aidan with an E and of course as everybody knows my name is Aidan with an A the fellow Aidan is a coffee machine and it makes coffee good enough for snobs with a single button so it suits me <laughs> perfectly doesn't it Mike says yeah. looking on Amazon at some of their oh no this is Ted saying I beg your pardon so you're going to tell us me, you yeah. some I, more stuff I, I, well I I followed his link that he supplied and, and sure enough this thing does look really interesting and ever so nicely made so I, I followed through on I followed fellow I did a, I did a fellow follow <laughs> and went and looked at some of the other fellow stuff and I wasn't really that sure if I was aware of it but all of it looks really nice ever so nicely designed I put a link in the show notes to the page that kind of shows quite a few of the different designs including my favorite which is the Clyde stovetop tea kettle um which just looks gorgeous. I, it, I mean, it's a hundred quid or thereabouts, but um, you know, I, I guess you get what you pay for. And, and this fellow stuff looks really nice. Have you ever heard of it? Have you got any fellow stuff? No, I haven't. And I was going to say, do, do they all have men's names? I mean, the Clyde stuff. Wouldn't wouldn't it be a miracle if they made uh, the Ted no. <laughs> Bluetooth speaker? <laughs> yes. You'd have to buy one of those. <laughs> <laughs> does look lovely though doesn't it I, i'm really very impressed with the um you know the look of it all yeah i'm really tempted to buy the aiden coffee machine and thank goodness they spelt my name wrong so i'm not going to be an idiot and buy a coffee machine for <laughs> yeah. 300 quid that i don't need but <laughs> yes indeed oh dear should we have a jingle let's do that I wonder who bought the Dexam Rotary Cheese Grater. Somebody did with my URL, my affiliate link, tinyurl.com forward slash Amazon Ted UK. The mystery buyer, pay, well, unless it was you, of course, which sometimes happens, doesn't it? it once in a blue moon, <laughs> but no, I didn't buy a cheese grater, sorry. This is, um, this is, uh, but in actual fact, I'd like to hear from the person who bought this if he doesn't mind, he or she doesn't mind coming forward. Um, £13.85, it's made of plastic, um, and I found that this kind of whole plastic thing you see we got one of these cheese graters that was made of plastic and in time the because the plastic was attached to the metal of the actual drum thingy um it just kind of came away with washing up or whatever in the mm. end it was just it just broke and you then just had to go and buy another one because i mean it rendered it useless um and we concluded that an all metal version might actually be better um if it was there was no joints with bits of plastic but I don't know, because this Dexan one could well be an exception. Um, so if you bought this and you are using it and um, it's uh, worth feeding back on, please do let us know if this is the exception, because it looks really cheap, really good, and on the face of it could be a bit of a... Oh, no, it can't be a cheapest chips, can it? It's too much. Uh, Judge Barton will tell us off. <laughs> so it's a bit like the potato ricer, but for cheese. And as you press the cheese in, you turn the handle and it gets grated on the way past. So it's a sort of combination between a, a potato presser and a mincer. Indeed. It's a very old-fashioned cheese. design. Yes. Yeah. And, and you can put carrots in it and stuff as well, and um, the, the, the cucumber and whatever you want. It's, it's, it, it looks quite a, like a nice grater, but like I say, I'm, ju I'm just concerned about the plastic into metal if it's all plastic or all metal okay but it was those joints that were the problem i think but um let us know if you bought this please um if it's um if it's standing up jingle heads top tips heads top tips heads top tips oh, it's, it's very noisy it's, it's like being a, a normal place <laughs> can you hear that? Can you hear that plane going across? I can hear planes and dogs barking and the sound of civilization behind you. Yes, Ted. Right. My two. My top tip today is one. Again, I put in the MeWe group this week. Is if you people know what the all hole is for in your Swiss Army knife. So if you've got a Swiss Army knife, particularly a Victorinox one, if you pull out the all um, blade in the middle of it, there's a little hole. 
and you think to yourself, what on earth is that hole for? Well, we now know. And it is for sowing in the wild. I've put a link in the show notes to a, a, a three-minute YouTube video yeah. um, which um, demonstrates exactly how you do that. And it is quite smart and very clever. And I can't imagine for the life of me someone needing to sew two bits of leather together in the middle of Yellowstone you Park. You never know. Never <laughs> expect the unexpected, Ted. <laughs> But it, as usual, when you post something about Victorinox and um, Swiss Army lives, knives, our, our crowd in we just love it. They're away and they're posting pictures of their versions and <laughs> they just love it. It's, it's really good fun. And one, once in a while, we just kind of put it up there and let people run with it and they have great fun. So, yeah, good for everyone. But anyway, yeah, that whole is so you can sew things together and the video it shows you exactly how you do it. I found it very interesting because I've always been befuggled how sewing machines work because the needle's supposed to go in one round and turn round and come back the other way and go forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards. And this video showed me how that isn't the case. So exactly educational too. It pulls it pulls the cord through with it. Um, but yeah, yeah, very interesting. And that's my top tip of the show. Jingle. Still using and still. I am still using my Thron Max, which sounds like some sort of superhero f- film. The Thron Max <laughs> Caster XLR Microphone Boom Arm, which is exactly oh, what yeah. it says on the tin. It's a boom arm that clamps to my table and I have my microphone upon the end of it. It's not cheap. I paid sixty nine ninety nine for it, but Ooh. I've been using it for four years. So, I mean, seventeen fifty a year doesn't quite sound quite so bad. Um, yeah. And, of course, I use it constantly, and it's it's serving me very well. The only qualm I have with it is that recently, or recently-ish, about a year ago, I had to replace my microphone, and my new microphone, plus the pop shield on the front of it, is rather heavy, a little too heavy for the boom, and it does struggle occasionally, sometimes collapsing without warning. Um, no. But that's that's my fault. That's not the boom. The boom is fabulous, and I'm otherwise very happy with it. So, um can you not tighten the, 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 the pivots, the they joints? They are tightened to the point that if I try to tighten them anymore, I'm going to break the thread. Yeah, they are right. absolutely... I mean, the thing is, it's, it's, I, I don't know the physics of it, but it's all to do with balance. And obviously, I've just got a little bit too much weight on the end of it for it to be able to balance properly. Um, you could pour some super glue in the joint. Something like that, Ted, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and it's cable. There's a cable running through it, so you... you, you you know, you don't have to go threading your microphone cable through it or dropping it around. That's good. The yeah. cable comes right through to the end where the mic... So it's, it's very... It's pleasant. It, it's attractive. It looks very professional. I feel like I'm a BBC studio in here. And um, yeah. it still works. Yes, still using. Very good. Four years on. Well done indeed. It does Hi, look thank lovely. You. Thank you. Um, and I, I've had these boom arms in the past before, and they're OK if, you're, if you've got a very solid desk or table or whatever to, to attach it to, but I haven't, and it was a bit of a disaster. But back in the day when I did have, they were great. And you could just so easily get the microphone out of the way. It's just so simple instead of yes. trying to balance it on things or whatever. I think if, if I ever needed to replace it, I would look at the ceiling hanging thing because that appeals to me as well, to have it just coming ah. down from above. But I'd like one of these ones you can lift up and down. Mm. Very good indeed. Very nice indeed. So you're still using that um, all this time later. I'm still using the kinetic sand you sent over. Do you remember oh, that? I do remember discovering that. And I sent you some in the post, didn't I? You yes. did. You sent me a bag of it. And um, and I, I just um, just wanted to mention that it's still here. And it's a, it's like, a, for those that don't remember it, it's an executive toy almost. It's, it's this kind of sand which kind of sticks together but doesn't really stick together and you can make it into different shapes and it sits there as if it's wet sand on the beach but if you want to just um, break it up then it becomes dry sand it's really clever stuff and um, uh, who knows what's in it or how they've made it happen but that was in March 2020 and I'm still using that I still fiddle about with it now and again and um, you know it, it just it doesn't hasn't spoiled in any way in that time so I, I, I really enjoy are you still playing with those little bricky things? I'm little bricky things. You've lost me now. 
Those little um, uh, fidget toys that oh, I sent you. Oh, the fidget toys? No! Yeah. I hadn't thought yeah. about them in a long time, nor had I thought about the kinetic sand until I read it in our recording notes before today. Right. And I'm, mine is in the garage somewhere, and I must get it out. I'm actually going to type a note in my phone now as we speak to remind me to go and find my kinetic sand out of the yeah. garage and play with it. <laughs> Good fun indeed. But no, the fidget cubes, I haven't... No, that's something else I haven't seen for a while, but I'm quite pleased with that because they really were addictive and I couldn't put the yeah. damn things down and they were getting dirty because <laughs> when you've played with them for so long, all the grease and grit comes off your hands and makes them sweaty and dirty and horrible. So no, please don't remind me. <laughs> we had a, one of our listeners, I think it might have been Danny Hoy, was a, was the kind of... Um, the, the the master of the, the the fidget toys. Yes. He used to come up. With, he used to come up with lots of different examples of that, and um, he tried them all out. Do you remember that? He, I, I, I think do. It was Danny Hoy. Yes, I do. Yeah. I, I mean, I have to fidget. I have to say, while we've been talking, do you remember we brought these plastic toothpick things onto the show not that long ago? The little bit of. Um, a uh, little bit of dental floss st- stretched between two pieces of plastic that you can oh, use. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I've been fiddling with one since we started recording, and it's now in three pieces, and I'm breaking one back and forth in my fingers until it becomes five. I have yeah. to fiddle with something all the time. Oh, missus. Right. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, the kinetic sand <laughs> must come out of the garage at once. Yes, we'll both have a play. Jingle! I've been to the original factory shop again. Oh, the one you found in the last show and talked about that yeah, I'd never heard of. And yeah, there we I'm, go. I'm, I'm, I'm their best customer now. <laughs> um, I <laughs> I went there this week and I and I wanted a lamp for my desk and a, a, just a simple lamp with a simple switch and no smart this and clever that. Just just an old fashioned lamp. Good man, uh, here here. That that you plug into a three pin plug socket as well not a USB thing. And, you know, they have one for eight quid and it's absolutely perfect. It didn't have a bulb in it for eight quid, but I had to buy another bulb. I had to buy a bulb for it. But apart from that, it's absolutely perfect. And it's just bright and it just does the job. And when I want to turn it off, I turn the switch off. And when I want to turn it on, I turn the switch on. And it's just simple and great and it's perfect for my desk. So I'm really pleased with that. And the other thing... Hang on, hang on, hang on. I was just going to say, that does mean, though, that when you're taking your first-class flight home from Los Angeles, you can't turn it on with your phone on the (laughs) way home. Sorry about that, Ted. Like the the kettle from Istanbul. (laughs) Well, actually, you could, because you could plug the three-pin plug into a a, 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 a thingy. Yes. Anyway, while I was there, I also realised that my jug, which I use for cooking stuff in, was absolutely knackered and disgusting coloured. And it didn't have any of the um, the markings still on it. So I thought, oh, look, I've seen this mug here, th- this jug here. Six quid, proper, genuine Pyrex, um, you know, one litre or no, yeah. half a litre mug, whatever it is, a pint mug, pint, pint jug. Um, just the, the usual thing that you see um, for py- from Pyrex. And it's just great. It works fine. Um, it should last a lifetime. Um, the, the, the one thing that, people tend to, to break with these pyrex mugs is the spout of course um i know that my mum's got one and the spout was just like cracked because it had hit something but apart from that really thick glass six quid you can't go wrong anyway that was a that was a second shout out really for the original factory shop if you've got one anywhere near you then do go and have a look because it's great fun and you'll enjoy a mooch around looking at whatever they've got um in there did you used to have, or did you just look, put it in, I want one of those? There was a jug that you brought to the show that I was very tempted to buy but didn't, where you could look in from above and it, you could see the levels because it had a sort of uh, a leveller at an angle. So as you yes. looked down, was that, did you own one of those? Um, and, and no, I didn't. I, I think that um, I recommended that we have one for... Um, for the purposes that you just described and I think I suggested it to my mum and then my mum who's just come back in and she's walking (laughs) and so they can't have knackered her completely in the CAT scan um she was thinking about it but never actually got to do it I think that was the case but yeah you're right I think you were thinking about it as well because it looked like like it was quite clever didn't it (laughs) so we all thought about it but nobody actually went and bought one (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there, there are lots of different kind of um, cooking implements in the way of jugs, which are quite interesting. So yeah, have a good look around. But um, do, as I say, the original factory shop is just great fun. It's it, it's like going into an Aladdin's cave and you never know what's quite is going to be in there and what what's on special offer and what they've got this week. And it's, yeah, it's good fun. I'm very pleased there's one round the corner from me. I will see your £6 purchases and I will raise you £1.99 because for £7.99 I was delighted to find the Famicosi mini size alarm clock on our favourite shop. I've had one of these for, oh, decades. I mean, I had it really for so, so many years and loved it. It's a proper, again, like your light, it's good, old fashioned. Yes, all right, it is a battery driven one. It's not actually a wind up, but it doesn't do anything except it's a clock with an alarm on it and it's a physical button that you turn the alarm on and off with. And I love it and I loved it. But um, not long ago, the battery door fell off the back and got lost. Um, Mm. So when I saw this one on Amazon as an exact replacement uh, for only eight quid, I couldn't resist it and I bought one and I'm very, very happy with it all over again. And I've kept the old one as a backup. Uh, The Fami Cozy mini size alarm clock. Again, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of these for sale in various places. But this one is tried and trusted by me over many, many years. And I'm very happy with it. It's tiny. I can it's my travel alarm clock. I can, you know, can pop it in my bag when I travel. It doesn't take up any space and it's utterly reliable. Not, not only is it a cheap as chips, it's also a still using because um, we, we bought, I bought one of these for my dad. I, th- I think we spoke about it last year because I got it for him for Christmas. And it's here, right? I, I happen to be here, so I'll go and grab it. And it's on his desk here. And he really likes it. Um, and I bought it for him for Christmas. It's here, right? I think we Now, the battery door is not falling off. And he quite often says to me, that's really handy to have on my desk. And it's a nice little alarm. But same thing. It's a, I don't know if it's actually a family what's it, but it's, it's a, essentially the same thing. And they're great. Yeah. Um, Viva, what was it you say? Viva Li Analog. Indeed. Right. Midge away. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> have you ever, <laughs> have you ever tried Citronella? to control midges. Yes, with the little uh, candles. I used them years yes. ago. Yes, yes. Did you? Did they work? They did work. And they smell nice. And um, Yeah, and, and I found that they work. I, I bought these um, four, um, sorry, 25 little candles. In They're called um, tea light candles. Yes, yes. And you get 25 of them for four quid, or no doubt they'll be cheaper from on the slow boat from China. But <laughs> um, in Amazon, 25 for four quid odd. And I've been inundated with midges in my static. I don't know where they come. Sorry, may I interrupt you again, Ted? I do apologise, but I have to say, you're not suggesting that anybody would consider four quid for 25 to be too expensive and therefore want the slow boat from China. (laughs) I mean, please. (laughs) That's an incredible price. (laughs) Well, some people would say, well, why would you pay um, four pound when you could pay one pound? And if you're not in a hurry, what's the problem? I can see the argument, the economic argument, um, but anyway, anyway, most of us want it the next day, don't we? Yes. <laughs> um, so I've been, I, I don't know where they've come from. I think it, they might have come from my dustbin because one day when I was trying to get organised re- with recycling, I brought the dustbin in the house and I wonder if that day was the day that they all got in and I just couldn't get rid of it. Anyway, so very, very annoying it all was. And I put these little tea tea like candles out with citronella in them and as soon as I did it I, I burned them for about an hour or something and I didn't see any images anymore they'd all gone um so they've certainly worked the same as they did for you by the sounds of it um the each one of them is supposed to last for four hours burning um so 25 times four hours is a hundred hours so there's, there's plenty of scope there to um, to midge away. <laughs> so no more midges in my um, eyesight. Thank you. John Doe says you can always make a trap. Oh, instead. H- half fill a glass with water, he says. Add a tablespoon of sugar and then a couple mm. of tablespoons of white wine vinegar or cider vinegar. Mm-hmm. And, and finally, the magic ingredient, a drop or two of dishwasher detergent, which is supposed Ooh. to reduce the surface tension of the water. 
Thus, the flying critters land in the water, thinking it's some kind of rotting fruit, but sink to the bottom. Oh, mm. you can. And there we say we didn't want to do practical jokes. <laughs> it works slowly over a few days, and numbers will come down if you leave two or three of these traps around. Works mm. great for controlling fruit flies and midges inside. However, it won't be as quick as your candles, nor as easy. I mean, <laughs> you've got to put it together in the first place, but it's a good, good shout, John. Um... Yeah, and you don't yeah. you don't have to worry about leaving a candle on. You just put these things out, and then they're there night and day. So there is that. Well, there, that's what I was going to come back to about the safety of fire. You know, because having candles around the place. In fact, someone did mention this in the group. That they're very paranoid about um, catching things on fire. But I mean, these tea like um, candle holder thingies, they're fairly wide on the floor and and not very high in the air. I mean, you'd have to really do something drastic to knock it over, I think. Yeah, yes, tea, yes, tea candles, I mean, tea candles are universal, and yeah, I think they must be pretty safe or they wouldn't be sold in the billions. Yes. Anyway, so there you go, 25 um, for four quid odd, and um, they seem to work. Oh. I'll, I'll, I'll feed back and tell you uh, during the summer, no doubt, if they don't work. Ooh, I've got bad news and good news. Hmm. The bad news... I've just had a mouthful of lukewarm tea. <laughs> <laughs> Another broken cup. Hey, and the good news is I've justified vindication. <laughs> the ember is for the bin. Oh, brilliant. There you are, folks, live on air. It's dead. <laughs> I still say you should send it back to them because they're, a, they're, they're such a company, I think, that we'll probably be keen to make sure you're happy. And even if it's out of warranty, even if it's years out of warranty, but, I, you know, I, I, it just might be worth an email, I think. I shall do that very thing. Well done. I want one, I want one, I want one. I want one of those. I want a Fujifilm X100 Mark VI. I'm sure you and do. I know, <laughs> I know it's all a bit techy, but I really want one of those badly. What is it? Um, what is a Fuji 100 It's a camera, uh-huh. and it's um, a, 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 a fixed lens camera, which um, is not the kind of thing that people generally tend to want this at the moment. Now, I just to put the context in here, I, I had an X100F years ago, and in fact, I probably talked about it on this very show, and it's one of my biggest regrets that I let it go, I sold it... Um, I know I've said this before, and it's, but it, this it's the acquisition of something like this that would actually um, get me back into yes. photography. I think. Ted, are we um, talking actual thirty-five mil, or are we still talking? To... The, I got a minute. The clean has arrived. Oi, keep the noise down. I'm recording here. <laughs> I'm just wondering if this is actually old school Vivla analog thirty-five mil film, or whether this is a digital camera. No, no, it's a digital camera, okay. but it's not. So it's not film, but it's cost fifteen hundred quid. And but the, the bigger problem here is that Fuji film just don't seem to have made enough of them. They they had this pre order thing going on. Even if you had fifteen hundred quid to spare, um, they haven't made enough. So these pre orders, <laughs> everyone's being really disappointed. They're shipping them out really slowly. Um, there's a bunch of crooks on eBay who bought a load of them up and they're selling them. For six thousand pound a piece. Oh God! Yeah. Um, and and I, I, you know, I I just don't. It seems to me that Fujifilm have completely underestimated the demand, or they're trying to generate demand to make them really popular. Or I don't know what they're doing, but it's an absolutely gorgeous camera. It really is. Um, and the X one hundred F that I had, I just loved it. It's got a really clever viewfinder. It's got a hybrid viewfinder, which is um, optical or um, electronic, depending on what you want. Um, it, 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 the whole thing is just gorgeous. It's wonderful. And as I say, if I was to have that one of those, I would start taking photographs again. I'd, I'd make myself, I think. But then I said that last time. So anyway, there you go. It was a quick one because it's a bit tech techy. And uh, by the way, I've still got your Nikon camera here, which I never use. <laughs> Ted, I was just thinking, if I had £1,500 to spare, I would buy myself a Fellows Aiden coffee machine. <laughs> <laughs> Has that lady finished building a house behind you? <laughs> she's, a, <laughs> she's obviously didn't realise that I was recording, but she's... Um, <laughs> 
plumbing through all her equipment through to do the cleaning. She oh, comes here dear. once a week. Put to, her in, for, put her in room 101 to, since we're there. Chuck her in. <laughs> yes. Right. The state, a uh, nice slinky link. Well done. The uh, I'd like to put into room 101 the state of UK dentistry again. The availability and the NHS to approach to what constitutes dental emergency. OK, right. right. Let me explain. So if you have got a dental emergency and you want to get seen as an emergency by the NHS, they will not consider it unless you've actually got a broken tooth or you've got an infection. If you've got a broken tooth, i.e. a tooth has actually fractured and it's in half or something, then they'll consider that an emergency. And if you've got a swelling, i.e. an infection, they will also consider that an emergency and they'll give you a moxil, no doubt. Um, but and it, dentistry is just so hard to I've been on the waiting list for my family dentist now for like six months and just this week I was told that um, that they'll take me in and I've, I've got an appointment later this week actually the first time six months later apparently it's all tied up with Brexit I mean we're not going to go there in this show but um, they tell me that they can't recruit dentists and, and the young dentists coming through training they want to live and work in cities not in the arse end of nowhere like North Wales so I think that seems to be the problem it's not enough um, people being allowed in from the continent I guess and not being able to dentist uh, practices not being able to recruit people especially in rural areas um, and not cities um, but it's it's been a, it's just been a complete pickle for me to get on the books of a dentist and just now six months later i've been able to do it so phew especially considering your trepidation of going at all that we've discussed yeah, before exactly. so i mean you've got to have to gird your loins and you know <laughs> i don't know what you need to do what process of meditation yeah. or tablet taking you no, have no, to go um, through and get yourself tamazipam. ready tamazipam <laughs> is my friend <laughs> I prefer marzipan. Now, <laughs> anyway, I concur with what you're saying and I wish you all the best. And for goodness sake, don't wuss out of it. Otherwise, you'll be waiting another six months. No, no, I won't. I, I, I absolutely can't do that because you're quite right. If you if you get struck off their books, I'll have to start again. <laughs> Here, I tell you what mine is that just I've just noticed of late. As you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not very keen on social media, so I may be talking out of my bottom here. But... I see, I've noticed what appears to me to be a new prevalence of videos, all of which have subtitles, usually in the middle of the screen in fancy fonts, in English, for no reason at all. And if I was making this video now, if, I was, if, so, if this monologue was a video, everything that I'm saying would be appearing in front of me in English text, in funny colours and, and fonts, for apparently no reason at all. Now, I think it started with Instagram and I presume also TikTok, although I don't, I'm not a TikToker, so I don't know. I've seen it on Instagram now very, very, very frequently. I would say the majority of videos that pop up on my Instagram where people are talking, they're accompanied by these subtitles. And now it's even moving on to, vid on to YouTube. I forget what it was, but I was looking up something on you. I think it was the mugs, actually. I think I was investigating the Ember mug versus the Vis2 just the other day. And, you know, serious, in inverted commas, unboxing and review videos of these mugs were accompanied by these wretched subtitles. And what's happening? Is the world just getting dumber and dumber and dumber and dumber that we now can't hear the spoken word anymore and we need subtitles? Or is it just a fashion? Or, or am I talking out of my bottom? It's not dumber and dumber and dumber. It's deafer and deafer and deafer. Think about poor people that haven't got hard of hearing. Now, I thought you'd say that, Ted. And m certainly YouTube already has a function where if for any reason you cannot understand what's being said, and sometimes I use it because people just talk so badly you can't understand what we're saying, you can, tw <laughs> you can turn that on and you can then have subtitles at your own discretion on or off. So I'm sorry, no, I don't buy that. I have every sympathy for people who, who are hard of hearing and will need the subtitles, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about these compulsive can't turn them off on every bloody video subtitles. Well, well, that depends on the platform because YouTube, you can turn that off and on with, but other platforms, you can't turn it off and on. It depends what tools they make available to the developers. And it is a, a bit trendy at the moment because AI, is making it available to anyone to do stuff like this and everyone's playing with it and making it all happen. Oh. It, it, it will settle down. Don't you fret. Uh, well, meanwhile, I'm putting it in room 101. <laughs> <laughs> OK, then. Oh, 
I, oh, there's that jingle again. You didn't ah, you didn't ah, Ted. Come on, all together now. Ah, 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 together. Ah, um, right. My, I'm giving a gold star to the Amazon pre-order price promise. I might have done this before, but anyway, I'm doing it again. I ordered an LP recently, which is not going to be released until September, right? Um, now, um, I, I paid inverted commas, although they don't take the money until dispatch. Nineteen ninety nine for it, and right. that's the price it was when I clicked. Um, I now see it's up to £24.99 and rising. Um, now, the promise, the, the, the pre-price, the, sorry, the pre-order price promise is that as soon as you click it, whatever the lowest price is between the click and them dispatching it is the price you pay. Um, so I guess that they must value pre-orders so much that they just take the hit on it because if that ends up being 30 quid, I'm going to get it for 19.99. Do you see what I mean? Um, so I, I, I think that that deserves a gold star. It's really good for the customer, good for me. Um, they get their pre-order, which, which they value, but I get the cheapest price there is um, between clicking and, and going forward. It encourages pre-orders. So... Um, while you're messing about with the show notes and not listening to me... No, I was listening to you. I was just trying uh, to understand uh, it. I'm trying to get my poor little head. But yes, OK, yeah, yes. Yeah, but if you've been listening, then you would have understood it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm just going to move swiftly on then. Oh, dear listener, the reason I was faffing around with the show notes because I was wondering whether I'd got time for another monologue before we hit the hour. <laughs> <laughs> but now you're going to get it. <laughs> I have you to... ever, no, no, before we go on, seriously, have you ever done a, a pre-order promise thing with Amazon? I've never done pre-order. I've, I've pre-ordered. I mean, I've got a book on pre-order at, at the moment, yeah. but I've never heard of the pre-order price promise. Oh, OK. So, no. Well, not, well, not, ev- well, not everything has the price promise. Right. And there's a, little, there's a little badge that says if it has or not. OK. Um, but um, LPs tend to do so. Um, anyway, well, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know what in September what price it ended up being. <laughs> Go on, your turn. Well, mine is <laughs> Amazon again. <laughs> I want to give my gold star to Amazon deliveries and returns. Yes, I know, yet again, and Amazon's in Room 101 one week and gold star the next, but I just wanted to... I just wanted to quickly go through my experience of deciding not to use Amazon and to use a a different company, in this case, Tolman in Germany and DHL. Um, You'll remember that I was trying out sound desks before I settled on my new little external sound card device. Um, And I tried first the Hercules 200 XLR, which I talked about on the show because it looked beautiful with my stream deck, but it was actually more for streamers and it wasn't right for me. So I wanted to send it back. I bought it from Tolman in Germany and it was £30 cheaper there than on Amazon. So I thought, right, let's not always just jump to Amazon. Let's buy it from Tolman. Took five days to arrive, which is fine. I expected that. But then when it did arrive, the DHL delivery screwed up. They gave me a window. They gave me the hour window. So I made sure I was home in plenty of time and they'd already been. They came about two or three hours early uh, and took it away again. So I had to wait another 24 hours to receive it. Of course, Amazon would have just put it on the doorstep and run away, which is risky. Yes, but it's <laughs> a lot faster. And anyway, Amazon deliver the next day in the first place. So I once I decided I didn't want it and I wanted to return it, that was fairly straightforward, same as Amazon. But I then had to print out a return form, fill it in an old fashioned way with a pen and put it in the envelope I put it in the package to return the item, which then took a good week to get back, after which I got an email saying that the item had been received and would be inspected in due course. And a couple of days after that, they said, yes, we've inspected it. You'll get your refund. And then a couple of days after that, the money finally came through. On the other hand, Amazon refunds are processed the moment the outward package has left your house practically. As soon as the postman has scanned it and Amazon can see that you've put it into the post, they issue the refund before they've even got it back. So basically, it's a one or two day refund versus 12 or 13. Uh, So so I just wanted to make the point that with Tolman, it took a week to arrive and then a week to return. But Amazon can do the whole thing in in two or three days, Um, not to mention the endless stream of emails I received from both Tolman and DHL to say, we've got it. It's coming. It's going. We're getting it there. You've got it. What did you think of it? So at the end of the day, 
I don't really think it was worth the 30 quid saving. I'd rather have paid 30 quid and just have had it the next day from Amazon and then said, oops, I don't want it and returned it the following day. Um, what I want to stress is I'm not putting Tolman or DHL into Room 101 because those companies are behaving like all companies behave. And that's the kind of ex um, system and kind of delivery and service that we expect. What I want to what I want to raise here is the extraordinary service from Amazon that you order something and they are knocking on the door with it before you've put the phone down. And if you want to return it, as I say, the moment they've picked it up, you get your money back. It's just an amazing. And even if even if they are, you know, unfair in their monopoly and they're not very friendly to the planet, they nevertheless provide the best bloody service you can get. So in for that reason, I give Amazon a gold star. I think that that company should be put into Room 101 because they're assuming that you have got a printer and they're assuming that it's OK to just kill trees and for no reason at all, except that they haven't got the infrastructure in place to do it electronically. They're making people have a printer and, and kill trees and everything. So I think they should go in Room 101. All right, that's an interesting point. But I also wonder how many other companies... I mean, if you decided to order and return items from some 100 companies, how many of them would come anywhere close to the service that we get from Amazon? Good question. You go and research it. <laughs> Thank you. I will. <laughs> you've got to order 100 things. OK. <laughs> and, you've got, and you've got three weeks to do it because that's when we'll be next with you on this very podcast. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this one. I think we're kind of up to the hour now, so we'll clear off and leave you in peace. Um, whateverworks.works is our website. Links to all the stuff we do in there. AidenBell.com is where you'll find Aiden. TedSalmon.com is where you'll find me. And in TedSalmon.com, you'll have links to all the MeWe groups, all the audio podcasts. Uh, watch out for all of those. Um, but yes, the MeWe group is where we'd like to you to hang out and engage with us tell us whatever works in your life bring some of the stuff let's get that engagement back to the level it was two years ago and let's have some item from you tell us what you've been buying and what's crap and what's great we'd love to hear from you we really would and it gives us content from the show who knows we might even be able to go back to two weekly <laughs> <laughs> good time so aiden last words to you as always if you are a silent member don't be. Let us hear from you. Yes. Fine last words. That was it. That was a pricey. <laughs> <laughs> right, OK, then. That's it, then. We're done, I think. Um, one last thing to say, as always. Don't forget... Whatever, whatever works... Works! works. Oh, gold star. Oh, sorry. 